We are doing the Hazian Loop. This is day one. We have just left the city of Hazian in northern Vietnam. So look at the scenery we have in front of us. We're also with Wes. We're going to be driving together for the next six days here. We're actually doing the Hazian slightly different from everyone else. Let's get on the road and let's start this adventure, guys. I've been waiting to do this for the last five years. Let's go. I think the sketchiest we've had. So just ahead here is China. You can see the cameras. I'll go through this tractor. Want to be on the horn here. Go. go. We've just started this journey, guys, and already 30 minutes out of the town and this place, this region is just beautiful. Literally layers of mountains in the distance, hardly any people, green landscapes. I am so pumped for this. We are driving up this incredible pass, guys. This is insane. There are quite a few lorries, but they go really slow up, so it's quite easy to overtake them when you can see ahead. Because we left quite late, we're trying to make it to this viewpoint, so now we've got time to get to our place before dark. Oh wow. Oh wow. So this spot is called Heaven's Gate and I mean, can you see why? We've got this incredible road. I think this is the way we're going to go next. So we're going along this path all the way down and I guess in into the valley. But you see the mountains in the distance look absolutely enormous. I think we're going to be going to one of the highest points in Vietnam later on the trip. As soon as we started climbing on the bike, the temperature dropped, had to put the jacket on. Let's have a look at the temperature actually. What is it? Um, 19 degrees but I think the air temperature or like when you're on a bike it's obviously colder than just you know standing the only nice thing about being on the bike is when you're behind a truck and it's quite warm you probably know why you ready to go absolutely let's go boy let's go. look at this as we come around this mountain and just reveals more mountains more scale more size I've heard day one is like not not the worst day but you know the most non-picturesque day i don't know how to put it in a nice way because these mountains are beautiful check out this corner this is this is mad Woohoo! these views guys these views so we're driving through the town which you just saw and we're going to try and make it to Yen Min, which is where everyone stays on the first day. Uh, it's about an hour's drive and the sun sets in about half an hour. So yeah, let's try and let's try and get there in not too long. Another mountain to challenge us. If you're doing the first day, the second part of the first day is the best stuff. Don't waste your time in the first, even though you think it is beautiful. The second part is more beautiful. You good to go? Yeah. Let's go boys, let's go. We have just arrived, checked into this little hotel. It's called Hotel 88. We've got two double beds, which is ideal. Um, yeah, but driving the dark was a little bit sketchy, but as long as you take it slow, don't go too fast, it was okay. Pretty dark outside now, as you can see. Um, but we're gonna go get some food, because we are starving. Big day, but yeah, bigger day tomorrow. See you there. Good morning, it is day two of the Hajian Loop and today is going to be an epic day. We've got a massive, crazy pass we're going to be doing today and we're actually going to be going, hopefully, fingers crossed, going to China, which is going to be a bit crazy, but we're going to give it a go. So let's jump on the bike. It's very early. We want to get on the road before the big tour groups get on. So let's buckle up. Let's get on the road. 
it's like 6 a.m. There's so many people out already. Hopefully we miss the big tour groups. Because that's the one thing about the Hazian now. It is pretty busy with tour groups and stuff. And the spots obviously aren't massive, the viewpoint. So we want to try and get there before everyone else. So right now we're driving through this little town and there's Vietnamese and communist flags all over the place. And last night we heard this like communist music and it's quite crazy, quite very different culture to the rest of uh, Vietnam, but very interesting. One rule to know at the gas station, if you're in Vietnam or Asia, make sure you push your way in. Otherwise everyone just cuts in and gets their fuel. It's kind of a free for all here rather than a line like you would in the UK. So straight onto the highway, not the highway, but the the high road here we go look at this this road is definitely i think the sketchiest we've had definitely just got to be careful hopefully it doesn't last long i think that's the end of the stretch to be fair look at this just someone digging on the side of the road gotta be careful Look at this for another insane valley. The scale of these mountains are massive, like humongous. I'm gonna keep saying that, <laughs> probably for the whole video, but it's true. Oh man. You might have seen this on Instagram. This little shot. It looks insane. And we're the only ones here because I think it's only like 7 a.m. It often gets really busy. Get here early and you'll be the only ones here. Not far from Yen Min, probably 20, 30 minute drive. We're gonna move on fairly quickly to try and stay ahead of the crowds today because I think we're like an hour and a half in front. I don't wanna be with the crowds. I just wanna have these mountain roads to ourselves because that's how, I don't know. Feels more right, feels more peaceful. We have been climbing for quite some time now and it has definitely got colder. My hands are starting to get really cold now. Literally driving through the clouds. This is crazy. Hello. High five. <laughs> High five. Uh, and another. Yeah. And another. Yeah. Bye bye guys. Bye bye. Have a good time. There's a cafe here. Just come to this little cafe. 30K for a Vietnamese coffee. Very nice, really tasty. He's got a proper machine and the beans back there, but they must grow coffee in this region. So surely it's gotta be fresh and good. We're gonna try this little off-piste thing. signal left not that there's anything any road any cars here I think we've just come to a dead end to be honest. I don't think there's anything too special down here, but yeah, pretty cool. Cool little thing. I think we'll turn around and just go back to the main road. Oh man, this is crazy. I'm sure this is where people will have accidents and stuff. When you hear of people dying on the Hazian loop, be bits like this. You just gotta be super careful and know what you're doing. Stay in a low gear so that you don't go too fast. Oh. Never like those trucks on a narrow road like this, especially with no fencing on the side. So guys, we have just started the journey to Long Chu, which is the most northern part of Vietnam. We're gonna be going really close to the Chinese border and hopefully later, maybe we could try and to go into China or going right, right next to the border. Um, but yeah, this road pass, we've got to go all the way down and then later on, we've got to come back along this path. I think it's about 25 kilometers off route, but then we can obviously come back and then head to where we're staying tonight. It's gonna to be getting colder, it's gonna be getting crazier. So, let's go. Finally found somewhere to eat. Hopefully we're gonna have some chicken noodle soup, some pho ga. Pho ga too? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. come on. All right, finally. Let's have a little seat. Oh, 
we just saw a big tour group overtake us. So it's probably going to be quite busy further on, but I mean, at least we had a couple of hours to ourselves with like practically no foreigners at all. Look at this, we've got a massive Folga chicken noodle soup and I'm gonna dig in because I'm starving. It's already 10 o'clock, we got, got up at 6 a.m. So, we need some eating. We need some fuel for the day to head to China, hopefully. I was feeling warm after that noodle soup, all like warm inside. As soon as we go back on the road, it's cold again, especially the hands. They said we didn't need gloves, but I'm thinking different now. <laughs> China is literally less than a kilometer that way. Those mountain ridges, I'm pretty sure like that is China over there. I just checked on the map. That is mental. Chinese writing, Vietnamese writing and English writing, border belt. I wonder, there's no one here, but I feel like if you walk down here, you'll be walking maybe towards the border. Yeah, along the border. So I don't know if it's changed, but yeah, this is the border just over there. In the distance, you can see Chinese writing and there is a fence. So I think this is the border with China. Literally less than 100 meters that way is China. But yeah, I don't know if there's another part you can kind of get through or literally go to the fence, but yeah, there's a man in there basically guarding it. So can't go near here. Don't want to get into any trouble. Let's go a little bit further, see what we can find. So I think we found just a little trail where you can go up to the fence and there's like no one about, so it should be okay. Here we go, this little trail. The trail to China, here we go. We don't want to go into China. We don't, don't want to do anything illegal. We just want to like touch the fence or something. Here we go. So just ahead here is China. You can see the cameras and the massive like big fence. We're literally on the border. And there was police patrol just back here. Crazy. In there, I don't really want to go because there's a camera just here. But that is China over there. That's crazy. You can see the barbed wire, the big fence. So Wes came here, what was it? Five years ago. Five years ago. And back then you could just get through. There was like a hole in the fence and you could just pass. But they've increased their security. For sure, they probably know. Yeah. It's not really a small little border crossing you can do now with all the tourists which come up to Hazian. Have you got that clip? Maybe you yeah, will insert it. I'll, I'll, I'll we'll see you. Yeah. There you go, guys. China's in the distance. I want to be 10 meters within China. So we have just passed a sign from welcome to Longchu. And these roads are massive. Suddenly, it looks really developed. Oh, and there's the flagpole in the distance. There on the hill, a big flagpole. National flag for long shoe. I've just found out this is actually not the most northern part or no, most northern viewpoint of Vietnam. Apparently, you have to drive about three kilometers over. Whoa! Just walked up the stairs and we got the flagpole above us. Blimey. Good views. So, in the distance, just like two or three kilometers is China again. Not quite as close as we were earlier, within 10 meters of the border, but still very close. We're feeling pretty tired after all the driving and getting up early. Honestly, it's tiring work, even though you're just sitting on a bike, you've got to concentrate lots because of the roads and the traffic. Just sitting down here, having a little drink. Oh. So these are one of the little tour groups coming in now. So these are, if you're doing an easy rider tour, this is what you'll be in. So guys, we just had lunch at this incredible Italian restaurant. Who would have guessed? In the most northern part of New Vietnam, you've got an incredible Italian restaurant. Food was really good. A little bit expensive though. We're just at this spot, Don Vang Town. We're not actually staying this town tonight like a lot of people. We're heading to another spot just further down because we are doing the Mapi Leng Pass, which is the most beautiful part of the Hajian Loop. Here we are going up to the Mapi Leng Pass. One of the greatest roads in the world. Was that like Tokyo? Go on, give me it, give me it. Let's go guys, let's go. Oh wow, no, stop it Vietnam, stop it. Woohoo! Go ahead. This is literally giving me the chills. Partly because it's cold, but more because of the views. 
This is ridiculous. We've got to go through this tractor. It's a bit crazy. We have just arrived at this homestay. It's called Mappy Leng Homestay. It's a very basic place, but it's up here in the mountains. So of course they're not gonna have the luxuries of other places, but we are literally on the doorstep of the Mappy Leng Pass. This is our room, obviously very basic. Beds are pretty hard like last night, but I'm sure we're gonna sleep well because we've had such a chaotic day. This place is epic. So this morning we're first gonna head to the Skywalk, which is like one of the most famous spots on the Haziang Loop. So here we are, this is the Mappy Lang Skywalk. We're just gonna be walking along here. I've seen old videos of people literally biking along here, but I don't think you can do that anymore. Look at this. That is insane. The views. So this is still the Skywalk. Obviously it's not the touristy bit. We've gone a bit further down to kind of escape the tourism and the tourists and like try and go into like the little villages and stuff and get up a bit higher. But blimey, this altitude is taken out of me because I'm not that fit at the moment. Not done too much walking, just been on a bike all day, haven't I? We're getting right up now. You kind of see the mountains in the distance, really big. Oh blimey, look at my shoes, just full of mud. <laughs> Obviously the landscapes around here are beautiful, but this area is actually the highest diversity of humans in the world. There's actually 17 different ethnic groups around here. The biggest one being the Hmong people, which they co cover across Northern Laos, Northern Thailand, Myanmar, Southern China, and also here in Northern Vietnam. We've walked quite a way now, and we've kind of come into this little village, literally just like 100 meters up here. This is quite cool. So this is probably one of the ethnic groups here in the Haziang province. So after that little village stop, like the kids were a little, little bit shy, but they were so excited by the cameras and stuff. And they just wanted to like shoot each other and like put each other on camera. But now we're gonna head a bit further along the Mappy Leng Pass. And apparently there's some incredible views to come. So I'm excited for this. <laughs> So here you can obviously see that they're making the road wider. It's obviously a lot smaller. We've just come into this cafe, ordered a little coffee, but you're gonna want to take a deep breath or sit down before I show you this view outside of this cafe. Look at this. Cheers. <laughs> here we go onto the next section of the road. And we've just passed this corner. Look at these freaking mountains. That coffee place, we just had coffees just around here. And then we turn around and you've got this. So let's do these roads in style. Limey. That is a cliff. Okay, so here there must have been a landslide. Let's go nice and slow. Although there are barriers, so you know, I've heard of people, you know, having having actually passed away here, but there's barriers all the way along this route. So it must be quite difficult. Okay. Obviously this doesn't really have barriers, they've fallen off. I wonder if there was an accident here. That's crazy. Right. That's quite a view behind me. Woohoo! Madness. Right guys. We're gonna have some lunch because we are starving. Honestly, walking around, just taking in the views. It is a lot of hard work. Here we go, check out this lunch spot. Just ordered some chicken rice, comga. And this is the view where we're gonna eat it. 
not too bad. It's a long way down there. I feel like they need some fencing on this part. Oh, it's seriously hard not stopping every 30 meters. You think you've got the best viewpoint and then there's another one 30 meters later. So this bit of the Mappy Lane Pass is a little bit sketchy. Oh, we'll just wait for this truck to come by. Okay, he told me to go. He didn't want me to wait. <laughs> hey, I think we've got to take a turn here to go down to the ferry port boat thing. So even if you indicate left, the bus is right away. There you go. We must be dropping down quite a way though. Uh, for the boat? Yeah, the boat? Here? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So it looks like you can't actually drive there. You've got to park here and then get this like electric shuttle to the boat ferry thing. Ticket counter. Looks like they're developing this area a lot, doesn't it? To the river canyon we go. Look at this. Look how blue it is. Like that's actually quite incredible. I think in rainy season, it's probably like completely different color, probably a lot more muddy, but wow. Look, we were up here literally like 40 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago, crazy stuff. Right, let's head on to the boat. It costs 120,000 to um, go on the boat and like the shuttle. So, you know, not too bad to be fair. Oh. We are on the boat, number 21. I think that's gonna be a lucky number. I was 21 once, like a lot of people. Thank you. So I just bought this little pastry for 10,000. Let's give it a go. Mm. It's quite good, yeah. Quite sweet, yeah. but not too sweet, which is a rarity for Vietnam. Yeah. Mm. We are going through the canyon, and this place is mental. Being down below, you kind of see the scale of these mountains. Honestly, guys, you've got to come down here to the boat. Magical. quite late and we need to get to the hotel honestly even though we've not done like loads of driving today it's been like so tiring just constantly driving like moving shooting for like the last three days straight so it's gonna be nice to chill tonight and then do it all again tomorrow but we're actually heading away from the Hajian loop and we're heading to another spot which is less touristy but could be even more special so I'm excited for that back on the bikes to our hotel so after that epic day, we are heading to Miovac, which is the town, literally, I think it's 20, 30 meters away, uh, so not too far. And then I wanna to talk to you about what you need to know if you're doing the Hajian loop, because I know a lot of you will, will, will want to be doing it, and there's a lot of questions with driving licenses, safety, all of that, and I wanna answer your questions. But guys, honestly, you've gotta watch the next episode. So that's not a reason to subscribe, then do it right now. Just go down, hit the subscribe button. We are in a hotel room now. We are in Miovac and honestly, I've washed, had some food and I feel so much better. Honestly, this hotel is amazing, especially compared to last night where, as you probably saw from the videos, it wasn't good. And in the night, I actually saw rats in the hotel room. Well, it wasn't really a hotel, but you know what I mean. But this one, beautiful, really new. It, if you are staying in Miovac, it's called Jiang Sun Hotel. It's really nice, R really new, and 300K for a double bed. So 10 quid each, which is so good. Anyway, guys, you know what this is. I asked you on Instagram what you wanted to know about the Hajian Loop, because obviously there's so many different questions, so much going on. So I thought this would be really useful for you guys. If you haven't already, go follow me on Instagram. It's at Joel Friendly, and yeah, you get the latest updates on what I'm doing, any questions like these. So yeah, just go down and do it, you know? And if you haven't subscribed, do that as well whilst you're at it. I mean, why not? Anyway, let's begin. Let's start with number one, and that is, did you have some problems with the police station? Like, did they stop you? Basically, if you know, then in Hajian Loop, they're known, the police are known for stopping you. And 
finding you quite a lot of money. I heard from 30 pounds to up to like 150 quid, which is a lot of money and you don't really wanna run into this. But there's lots of ways you can get around this if you do not have an international driving license. And let me show you what you actually need. So not only do you need an international driving license, you actually need to have this little bit done as well. So you see this, I don't wanna show you all my details, sorry guys, I do trust you, you know, there's just some weird people out there. You need the A done, which is like a little motorbike thing, and then you need B. Well, you don't need B, because you're not driving a car, unless you're doing the Hajiana in the car, which you shouldn't be doing. But you need those two. If you don't have this A thing, then this international driving license is not gonna work. There's a few ways to get around it if you are driving yourself. The first one is you can leave at certain times, okay? So at the rental company, they should help you to say, oh, the police have stopped. Like, we got told after 1 p.m., the police don't bother. They probably, earn them. you know, they're done for the day, so they don't bother checking. So another way you can do it is get a local to drive you out of town on your bike, and then they drop you off, they get on their friend's bike, and they come back. So basically, it looks like you're already, you've got an easy rider, but that's not the case. Let's move on to should you do it in a group or solo, or with, you know, with friends like me and Wes are. So honestly, when we've seen the groups, they are rushing around, hitting all the spots, and also they're hitting the spots at the most touristy times. And so these viewpoints, five years ago, they weren't busy, but now, they are very busy and you're gonna be a part of that busyness being in a group. I mean, the advantage of being in a group is that you've, you've got friends, you've got, you know, you know where you're staying. Everything is organized for you if you book a tour. Say, the most common one is Jasmine Hostel, but there's also Q, QT Rentals, which is where we rented our bike, um, even though we weren't in a group. In all honesty, I think the roads are pretty decent. If you've ridden for a fair amount of months in Southeast Asia, then I think you're gonna be absolutely fine. There is, if you've watched the videos, then you've seen some of the routes so far. There is like trickier bits, but in all in all, it's it's pretty safe. But you need experience. This should not be the first time you ride a scooter. End of. It shouldn't be. Like, there's too much at risk, okay? Don't do it, don't bother. Just use an easy rider. Honestly, if you're a bit worried, use an easy rider. It is so much safer. They've done it a thousand times. Um, also, you can enjoy the views rather than just, you know, concentrating the whole time. And that's what you're here for. You're here to enjoy the scenery, enjoy the views. So don't, don't, just take an easy rider, yeah? It's not a big deal. I kind of covered this already, but people are saying, should I take four, three, four or five days? Honestly, three days is too short. Four days, I think is perfect. Five days, you can probably add some extra little bits because the information they give you when you rent it, um, they've got so much information. They ask you how many days you're going and then they'll give you a route for that many days. And so, yeah, you could, however much time you've got, use that time and they'll show you the ways. We rented it at QT Rentals. Honestly, the customer service wasn't that great. Like they just seem to ignore us. Don't worry too much about that, but the bikes honestly are great and they do seem like a big reputable company, which is what I kind of wanted for a big kind of trip like this. Also, I do have insurance for the bike. So if anything happens, it's insured. That costs 80,000 a dong a day and the bike was 180,000 dong a day. So 260,000 with insurance which, you know, it's more than hiring a bike, say, in other parts of Vietnam, but, you know, for the Hajian Loop, I don't mind, because it's good. Also, if you are driving yourself, you need a semi-automatic. Like, you can rent automatics, but it's not advice. Just, you need to learn how to do a semi-automatic before you get here too, just so you're familiar and you're not worried. But honestly, semi-automatics are very easy to ride. Guys, you also asked me about any tips or things that I've learned, which you should also know before you do it. And one of those things is a helmet, but not just a helmet. Obviously you have to, you must wear a helmet, a visor, because a visor is gonna stop all that dust. Also the cold, because it's surprisingly cold up here. It's gonna stop that cold hitting your face and making your nose run and you know, all that stuff you don't wanna know about. That. But yeah, get a visor. Um, try and find one or pay a bit extra so you've got that. The other thing is you need long trousers and a coat because it gets cold. When you're going through the clouds, it's freezing. Like, especially on a bike, it might only, it might be 14 degrees, but it is colder than just walking. You need, I had like a long sleeve t-shirt, two jumpers and my coat on and, it was pretty cold still. 
Gloves, you don't really need gloves. You don't really need a hat. The other thing people rent is knee pads and arm pads. Honestly, I don't know why I didn't rent them. You might as well rent them. I don't think they're that expensive, like 50,000, 80,000 uh, for the whole three, four, five days. So if you want to do something a little different like we are, we're doing a one-way rental from Hajian to Chao Ban and we're going to this incredible spot. I'm not going to reveal it yet. Um, up near the Chinese border, but further, further north, south, east, <laughs> further east. So if you want to do something a bit different and do like a one-way rental, you can use key QT rentals like we did, really cool. Okay, I'm pretty sure that is everything. If you do have any more questions, please leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, just hit subscribe. Honestly, it helps me. And I can keep making these videos and making it useful and helpful for you guys traveling. So thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video where we're going to some insane untouristy spots in Northern Vietnam. See you there.